Good morning, you all. This is Jamerica5288, and I want to talk to you today about ackee and codfish. This is Jamaica's national dish. My grandmother used to cook this for a special occasion because ackee is hard to come by. It doesn't grow, well, it doesn't grow in the northern region of the United States. It's a tropical, it's a tropical um, tree that grows in Jamaica and you can't open, you can't use the um, the fruit until the flower opens because it's poisonous. Then they just peel these seeds out and take the flesh and they cook it with codfish or saltfish. And I have some saltfish here. We got some, we finally got some here in Texas. Thank you, Jesus. So I'm going to show you how I do it. So I'm soaking the, the saltfish or the codfish in my case. Some people use different types of fish and water because this thing is packed in salt. Um, this is not high blood pressure friendly. So if you have high blood pressure, I don't know, maybe you wanna, you could use some regular codfish and put a little bit of salt in there. But I believe that if you don't get the cured fish, it doesn't taste as good. So I'm gonna soak this for a couple of hours and then I'm gonna put it on the stove and boil it. I'm gonna dump the water and I'm gonna put it on the stove and boil it out. But first I gotta soak some of this salt up because that is, that is, there's way too much. It's cured in salt, which means it's covered in salt when you get it. All right, see you in a sec. The codfish has been sitting about an hour, so I'm going to go ahead and pour the water off. Hopefully I don't hear my dogs growling at each other. Not nice in the morning. It's still dark outside. Guess I can't change my old ways. Getting up early in the morning. I'm gonna put more water on there and I'm gonna boil this thing. While I'm boiling it, I'm gonna go ahead and make some um, fried dumplings. I'll start the fried dumplings. So I'm gonna take this over to the pots. The pot over to the stove, I should say. And I'm gonna turn it on high. I'm gonna boil this thing out. And I'm gonna taste it to see if there's enough salt gone, and then um, we'll see where we, where we go from here. I'm I'm only gonna boil it for a little while. It's fish; it cooks quickly. And the aki, I'll put that in last. Um, you can order this from Amazon. I'm gonna recommend a book to you all. If you like West Indian food or if you like Jamaican food, this is um, and this is in a lot of our households. A real taste of Jamaica. This book has been around, I guess, before I was born. I don't know how old this thing is. I ordered it from um, eBay, I think. Oh, it is a copyright. Hmm. First published in 1993. So it's not that old. But this lady's food is good. If you like Jamaican food, go ahead and get the book. There's some things that you're not going to be able to find, like unless you're in Florida, like that is um, breadfruit. Uh, we don't have that here in Texas right now. I guess they don't, you know, they don't sell it right now. But we we have been getting some stuff in lately. But uh, her book is something that you might want to look into if you like Jamaican food. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to start um, preparing the um, fried dumpling because they have to rest. Um, I'll see you in a sec and show you how to do that. So in order to store, start the um, fried dumplings, I need to get some flour and I'm gonna get some baking powder and some water. It's real simple. Just a second. So, what do I need to do? I need to get a bowl. It is super early, super early. I don't know, I just wake up at five in the morning. No alarm. Once your body gets into a rhythm, I guess it just stays that way. I'm gonna do about a cup. Should be enough for us. So I did about a cup of flour. Oh, y'all can't see me. I did about a cup of flour, and I'm going to get some baking powder. And I'm just gonna put a little bit of baking powder in there. I'm gonna do a quarter teaspoon. A little bit of salt. Mm, salt. 
it's over here. I'm forgetting where my stuff is. Man, it's been a rough couple of days. I was so worried that the power was gonna go out. There's a lot of people in Texas without power right now. Um, and some of them, I mean, they need it. Some of them have CPAP machines and oxygen machines. And man, it's just, you know, and I actually got teased about some of the things that I have like buddy heaters and small generators. But you can't listen to people because everybody has to, you know, dance to the beat of their own drummer. And some people have to learn the hard way. Um, you know, if you try to tell them they think you're crazy, you know, you, you tell them, you know, get it, just get a small generator. They're like, well, why would I need that? I have electricity. And now some of them don't. And I feel so bad for some, some of them, some of them are children that, you know, children have no no choice. They're at the mercy of their parents and society. I myself put off buying a um a gas and propane generator. I was like, oh, I'll just wait. I'll wait it out, right? Well, that generator is stuck in Dallas right now. <laughs> and I don't know when it's going to get here. They're still trying to clean up. I mean, I... I'm glad that we don't have, well, we have lost power several times throughout the year. So I was concerned that we would lose it again. And I don't, you know, I didn't have a, a, a I, didn't, I didn't feel like I had enough power. You, you never, you never will feel like you have enough power when stuff like that happens. You're always going to be concerned that everything is going to turn off and nothing is going to work. I'm going to get some water just a second. But... If you have the money, you should get do as much as you can to be self-reliant. Um, I don't understand. I don't understand why. Okay, well, initially I'm from New York, and we didn't have that many power outages. I was from New. I'm from New York City, initially, and we didn't have power outages. I remember one power outage when I was a kid. And man, that was bad because people started looting. So I guess they made sure that never happened again. But here in Texas, some people have underground utilities and other people have the, have the, um, over the poles. And the thing in, in the, at least, at least in the Austin area, they are into trees. As a matter of fact, they tag their trees. You can't cut down a, a tree on a public street without permission. They're all numbered. So... Because of that, some of the trees didn't get pruned properly. And they were, you know, they everybody loves to see pretty trees in Austin. They want to, you know, they want the house there, their house to be, you know, they say trees bring value to a property. But I remember, um, like at the airport, I noticed that they had tags numbering, number tags on the trees where, you know, you couldn't cut any of them down. So people... You know, they don't prune them because they don't want to kill the tree because maybe they're afraid or they don't want to reduce the value of their property. I don't know which one it is. But if it's on city property, 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 if it's on city property, you cannot cut down the tree without permission. It has to be dying. Or... So because of that, the tree limbs froze and knocked out the power lines because some people have overhead power lines. So these branches were falling down and they're still falling down because of the weight of the ice. And a couple of days ago, I, I, I showed you all what was happening in the backyard. Because of the weight of the ice, they started falling down and taking down the power lines. So now the city's scrambling, trying to get power up. And I mean, the branches were is, have they fall fell on people's gates, houses, cars, taking out power lines. It's just, it's just interesting. It's just interesting. And you know, very few people have generators because they didn't feel like they need them. They live in the city, and they're like, "What? Why would I need a generator? I, you know, I, I'm I live in an apartment, or I live in a house in the city, and." Or in the country, if they have overhead, the older houses have usually have over overhead um, power cables. So some people are homeless. Some people's houses have burnt. One guy's house burnt down. Um, 
because he, I don't know what he was doing. I guess he had a, um, a heater too close to, um, too close to something that was flammable and it burnt his house down. I think that happened to several people. And a lot of people were on the roads and they got into accidents. It was just, they just had, you know, you just have to stay home. But how are you going to stay home if your house is, just trees are falling on your house? So there's like a quarter million people. There was a quarter million people or over a quarter million people now in Texas that didn't have power. And I think there's about 100,000 now. It's important to get your generators. Don't listen to these people who tell you, oh, what you doing that for? That don't make no sense. Why you need all this stuff? Do what you want to do. Don't listen to them. They ain't, they, they, and when the stuff hit the fan, they're going to be just as ill-prepared as anybody else. Do what you want to do. Do not listen to people. They will lead you astray every time and you'll end up being sorry. So, my dough is done. I'm, I'm, I'm getting off my soapbox. My, my uh, dough is ready, all right? So, I'm going to put it in there. You know what? Put some flour on it and I'm going to put it in a plastic bag and I'm going to let it rest for about an hour. And I'll be back. Okay, so I have already, um, I've already boiled my codfish and I'm going to have to go through. There are bones in this codfish. The last thing you want to do is choke on a fish bone when you're trying to eat your breakfast. By the way, egg, ackee and codfish or salt fish are usually served in the morning as a breakfast, okay? And it's served with this. I have my dough resting in a piece of plastic, just like I said earlier. What I have, okay, so I'm going to tell you the ingredients. I have my my uh, salt fish in here and I have a habanero pepper that was in the freezer, some garlic, like two cloves of garlic, y'all can't see me, an onion, it's supposed to be three tomatoes but I only had these little cherry tomatoes so I'm gonna use what I have because I am not going out there, they're still cleaning up. And I have some green onions. They call them escallions if you look in, in their book, but escallions are green onions. And I always um, just cut, I just cut the top of um, the escallions and I'm gonna wash them off because I got them out of a pot. Um, I cut the top of the escallions and they just keep growing back. So I never have to buy them again unless, you know, I leave them outside and they get frozen. By the way, I had to pull all my plants and this house is full of outdoor plants right now. So I'm going to wash these scallions off and I'll be right back. Or should I say scallions, green onions, same thing. So I'm going to take my pot of fish and we're going to go through and uh, try to get the bones out. I'm, I'm going to flake it as I go along. Make sure that there's no bones. And I'm just, you see, I'm just picking it apart. Yeah, so I have a lot of opinions on things that go on um, in reference to the way sometimes things you don't understand or your the way I see things may not be the same way that you see things, but that doesn't make me or you wrong. It's just that we have different life experiences and we all adjust to what your our past, you know, taught us. And I told you all before that I'm retired military, so I've seen kind of a lot of stuff, good and bad. So I try, here's a here's a bone, see? There you are, it's a fish bone. I try to um, make sure I don't make some of the same mistakes that I made, or I, some of the mistakes that I saw other people make in the past. And one of them is, is just being too trusting or blind to, you know, or, or not even blind. It's just um, not be and not even being too trusting. It's just being as self reliant as you possibly can, or as your family can possibly be. You don't want to be that family or that person who's always asking or requiring assistance. If you can do it yourself, do it. Then there are those wolf preppers. Oh, they're a different one. So I'm not a prepper. I just, you know, I'm just a a little old lady trying to get by. And we in here are just doing the best we can. But um, there are people who are, they call themselves wolf preppers, which they say, well, if I don't have it, I'm just going to go and take it from my neighbor. That's interesting. That's really, really, really. 
that is the, I think that's really low. Did you ever hear the the story about um, there was one that there was I forget what it was a, it was a childhood story about an ant or somebody who kept on a squirrel who kept on preparing for the winter and when the winter came the other animal who wasn't prepared was starving and and um, says you know can you give me some of your your food and the other one was like no there's also one in the Bible about the ten virgins. Five of them had, went and got their lamp oil and prepared for the bridegroom to show up. And five of them did nothing. And then when the bridegroom, they heard that the bridegroom was coming in the middle of the night, they were not prepared. And then they went to the ones who did have um, oil in it for their lamps and say, why don't you share with us? And the ones who prepared said, hey, if I give it to you, there's not going to be enough for me. So the five, the, the, um, the ones that didn't prepare went out and tried to prepare at the last minute or tried to get their oil at the last minute and they missed the bridegroom. Moral to the story is you're responsible for yourself. No one is, is supposed to, is, is, is obligated to help you do as much as you can. So I pulled one bone out and didn't see any more and I'm going to put that over here and throw this pot in the, in the, um, in the sink so there's my fish over there and now I gotta deal with this onion <laughs> these onions and garlic and habanero let me see what knife do I want I'll take that one right there and I'm just rough chopping it make sure I don't chop off my fingers Oh, y'all can't see me. Let me see if I can move it down a little bit. So I'm just chopping it. Oh, this is my coffee. <laughs> I'm a coffee drinker. That's how I make it through. Anytime I finish this breakfast for us, um, it'll be around, well, it'll probably be around 7 o'clock. I woke up early, 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 early as usual. Sometimes I wake up and I force myself to go back to sleep. All right, let me get a another bowl. Get out the kitchen. Goodbye. Go. Go. Y'all must be saying, who is she talking to? A dog? She's talking to that person like a dog. It is a dog. <laughs> I am talking to a dog. I'm talking to my German Shepherd. Who's always by my side. Oh boy, stop it. We have rabbits out here in Texas and he don't like them. He does not like them. <laughs> so I got my onion here. I've already cut up my green onion. There we go. And next, on to my onion. Mm. Do it the way my mama taught me. Get the outer layer off. I've given up on trying, trying not to cry. I try bowls of water, running it over the sink. Yeah, no, no, nothing is working, so I guess I'm just gonna be a big old crybaby if if it affects me. Some onions are stronger than others, and I think if you pull the outer layer off, it's not as bad. Oops. So I pulled all of the skin off, and I'm gonna throw this in the tr in the trash. Mm. And I'm back. So you know how I do? I do the tic tac toe, right? Do that, 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 that. In order to make it work, you gotta leave the bottom on the onion. So you see right here, I have it tic tac toed, right? Move the camera back down. Uh-oh, I'm sorry. Okay, and I'm gonna chop these just like that. Okay. 
The recipe calls for one large onion. Because of the way that a lot of the islanders eat, including Hawaii, or a lot of the islanders, they use, they use a lot of natural foods or, or foods that they grow on the land, like um, coconut, bread, breadfruit, and all that stuff. They live longer than us here on the mainland if, or here in the United States. In Hawaii, they call it the mainland. So the fresher and the more you can cook for yourself, the better off you are. I remember um, during COVID, I went down the frozen food aisle. And this is when I realized that a lot of people do not know how to cook. So I was one of those people who didn't have enough stored up in the house for us to um to last so we had to wait in lines and i went through the store and everything was just a shamble there's very little old food in the supermarket but was but the main thing that i noticed that was gone was prepared foods all the frozen food all the frozen food was um was gone let me um, come back right back. Okay, I hear something. And I'm back. I'm up there screaming. What the heck? All right, so I'm gonna put these onions in the bowl with my green onions. <sighs> Looks like it's gonna be a pretty day. All of the ice has melted outside like it never happened like it never happened the city is around uh picking up fallen limbs all over the place so i don't want to go out there i think i could last like one more day with this cooking thing without having to go to the supermarket. If there's anything in the supermarket, because here in Texas, when a disaster is getting ready, is, is imminent, there's any imminent danger or any kind of disaster is coming, the store is empty. I might take y'all with me to show you what happens. They empty all the shelves. And I was like, wow, I had never, I never saw anything like that before. It looked like, I mean, oh, I was like, am I in the United States? What the heck is going on here? They will, all the water, all the ramen, everything, all the dairy is gone. <laughs> it's all gone. So you better get it while you can. So maybe it's good that I don't go out there because all I'm going to do is get disappointed and waste gas. <laughs> I don't know if the kids are going to school today. I need to check. They are putting up my tomatoes right now yes i'm putting everything in the same bowl the fish is already cooked the last thing you put in this dish um it's going to be your aki because the last thing you want to do is make your aki all you know chopped up you want it as as intact as possible especially since the canned stuff if i could get fresh aki i would be so happy one time I came home on leave while I was in the military. My grandmother, she used to cook special dishes when I came home, right? So this particular day, she was trying to surprise me because uh, she knew I like Aki and, and, and codfish, right? But my friends came and got me, and I didn't know she was doing that. I just, I, I didn't know she was cooking. And she says, well, when are you going to be back? And I was like, oh, Grandma, I'll be back, you know, in an hour or so. Well, it took us long. We hung out at the mall and all this stuff, right? I get back and she cooked some lamb, some ackee and codfish, some plantain, everything, everything that I liked. And my brother and my mom ate most of the ackee and left me like a teaspoonful. They ate all of it. And I was like, you know what? See, this is... This is not right. They said, well, you should, you didn't come back. We didn't know if you were coming. I had to come back. I had to sleep. They didn't save none for me. Basically none. A teaspoon enough to make me angry. So I learned how to do it myself. 
me go wash this board off. Unfortunately, my grandmother trusted them enough to let, let them take it upstairs. We had a three apartment um, house in New York. And um, she let them take it upstairs to the upstairs apartment. That was where she made her mistake. She said, they didn't leave you any, Denise? Uh-oh, Jamerica? And I said, no, I didn't get any. You got a teaspoon. They left just enough so I, they, I could, you know, I couldn't say that I didn't get any. Like, how selfish can you be? He was like, well, she doesn't cook for us. I said, y'all haven't, y'all never left home. And she never got to miss you guys. So. Oh, Lord. Here we go. I'm cutting up my garlic. This is not in the book. This is just me. I like garlic, so I put it in there. I put garlic in everything. Just my thing. I'm going to chop it up a little bit more. Let me take this end off. By the way, my hands are cook hands, so if you have sensitive hands or sensitive skin, do not cut up the habanero, or we call it scotch bonnet, with no gloves on. Somehow it doesn't affect me, I guess, because I've been doing this so long. Or maybe, I don't know, maybe it's in my jeans. It doesn't bother me. It might bother you. I'm going to cut up some more tomatoes. That is not enough. Okay, and I'll be right back. Okay, so I put a pan on the stove um, to heat up. What I'm gonna use is some, I made some homemade bacon. Um, I cured some, some pork belly. And I'm gonna use this pork belly. I forget what they call it um, when you do it yourself. But I'm gonna use this pork belly to render the fat and use that to saute the vegetables. You don't have to do this if you don't eat pork. This one is too meaty. If you don't eat pork, just use um, oil, <clears throat> coconut oil, or any oil you want. I don't use vegetable oil, but you certainly can. So I'm gonna take, what do I have in here? Two pieces of bacon, or whatever I have. A nice fatty piece of bacon, and I'm gonna get the fat. I'm gonna render the fat out of there. Throw this out. <clears throat> Down. You could even use butter if you want. Um, that's a fat. To um, I want. I use this one. So this is gonna stay in the pan. I'm smoking up the place. Woo! Don't burn it, Jamaica. Don't burn it. In this bowl, I have all the vegetables. I have the tomatoes, the onion, the um, the green onion, the garlic. And that's it. Okay. I'm supposed to cut up at least three tomatoes in there. I used the little cherry tomatoes because I didn't have anything else. And on here, I flaked my codfish. And I open my aki. You see how the aki looks? It's very delicate. It's already pre-cooked because they canned it. But it's really delicate. It falls apart really bad, really quickly. Um, so you got to be careful when you put this in there. That's why I put it in last so that um, it doesn't break up. You don't want it mushy and it will turn mushy on you quickly. So... I'm 
getting this pan coated with oil, pork oil. And right here I have my dough. I'm gonna get a cast iron skillet out or a skillet. Uh, why do I say skillet? Uh, a frying pan out. to restack my pans. So I got my cast iron for the um, the fried dumplings. I don't really want the pork, I just want the fat from the pork. careful butter scorches easily so you're better off um, you can use clarified butter which is called ghee or you're gonna have to have your pan super super low so that the butter doesn't burn I've smoked it and I got oil from the bacon. And I'm gonna take my vegetables and I'm gonna put it in there. Woohoo! Mm. Get y'all seeds all over food. Codfish, now that I've smoked myself to death. my trusty dusty coconut oil. Let me turn this on. Turn it on high. And I'm going to get a tablespoon.
All right, and I'm gonna let that coconut oil melt. Get some black pepper as if this, this isn't hot enough already. I just want some pepper in there for color. All right, and now that I have effectively maced myself, let me show you. This thing is going to be hot. These habaneros came out of my garden, and they're stronger than the ones that they sell in the supermarket. Let me put my coconut oil away. Do a little taste test. really good. <clears throat> Last thing I'm going to add is my aki. And what you do with the aki is you fold it in. <clears throat> You're not trying to cook it. You're just trying to incorporate it into the dish. Do not break up your aki. Let me show you what it looks like. There we are. That's Aki and Codfish. It's very pretty. I love the colors. And you see how the Aki is still intact? You see that? That yellow thing? That's Aki. There's your tomatoes. The white stuff is your codfish. Bedtime, go back down, go back upstairs. <clears throat> and we're back. So the frying pan is hot. At least I think it is. Yeah, it's sizzling. And I have it on like four. I pinched out my dumplings and I am um, going to put it into the oil. Let it sizzle, sizzle. <clears throat> Pinch them around. Make sure the center is empty. I like them to almost be a donut. A donut. Pinch it out. And I don't like big dumplings. I like smaller ones. You can wait way more than this, but we we're not gonna eat a lot of it. So this is good for us. Move this one over. <clears throat> on the aki and codfish so it doesn't lose its um, steam. Trap some of the heat in there. Let me get a prong for these dumplings. Or oh, they call them Johnny Cakes. Either way, same thing. this time. Thank goodness. I hate dishes. And I don't like using the dishwasher. I don't think the dishwasher does a good job, even though, you know, it has the sanitized thing on it. I just like washing them by hand to make sure that um, it's clean. I'm going to place down Better to cook it slow 
And then to cook it too fast and it burn on you. And then, the, and then it's burnt on the outside and inside is not, is not cooked. I splashed oil all over the place earlier. America. It can happen quickly. Nothing good happens quickly. All things take, good things take time. Turn it up a little bit. And turn this thing around. <clears throat> if you're using cast iron, remember that you're not, don't touch the handle. Do not touch the handle. Let me get some avocado. That's another thing that we like. You know, avocados are hit and miss. You buy one, and the next day, I've had them for about two, three days, because I bought this prior to the storm. Yeah, see? See what I'm talking about? Avocados, you're hit and miss, and, and you buy them, and you think that they're not um, they're not ripe, and you, can have, you have a couple of days, and they they mess with you. They go bad on you. I can't use this one. I'm trying to cut the bad parts out, but it's not working. And this is a Hass avocado. This is not a Florida avocado. Um, <clears throat> they're way smaller than um, the ones I'm used to. Even the, the large Hass avocado, which are from... Okay, this side looks okay. Um, that are from uh, South America or they say Mexico, but it's really South America. Um, even those are smaller than the ones I'm used to. So I'm just going to cut the bad part off like a true West Indian would. Throw stuff away. We just throw away the bad part. It, and there are people who say you can eat the bad part. Or I just, I don't know. I don't like eating rotten, rotten stuff or stuff that doesn't look appealing. Cut this again. <clears throat> and I'll be back once I'm ready to plate or once I plate. Okay. Okay, we're done, YouTube. This is Jamaica's national dish, Aki with codfish or Aki with salt fish and Johnny Cakes. Johnny Cakes is just fried dumplings and a little bit of avocado there. Here it is again in all of its glory. I just love this dish. I used to beg my family or my grandma to make it for me. She, I think she did a better job than I did, but I, I, I think I did okay. <sighs> Please like and subscribe. I cannot wait to eat this. But in the meantime, I'll see you next time. And take care of yourself. And take care of each other. Bye.